bitches. Welcome to the broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. This is season four, episode 26, number 161. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. It is good to be here live for the patrons today. Uh, yes. Martin Luther King Hooray. Day. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Indeed. Mm-hmm. You know, I my and my sister reminded me of this that this is like the most perfectly timed holiday of the entire year because you're so like sick of being at work by like the third week back after. (laughs) Oh good. I'm not the only one that feels that way. (laughs) Yeah. After the holidays that it's just, it's really nice to like have a day that's like, all right, we get it. (laughs) It really is. And then you know that in a month you get to do that again. And then afterwards it's just like, hold on until May. So oh, you, you don't get, get President's Day? I don't get President's Day, and I don't get Veterans Day. Which is oh, wow. weird, right? Because the courts are closed, but I still have to go to work. We That's don't get problem. Veterans Day. But, like, do, right. do you get Columbus Day? No. Okay. But my mom doesn't get Columbus Day anymore, either, and she teaches on Long Island. Yeah. I feel like Columbus I mean, Day is kind Columbus of like Day. a hit or miss. Like, not everyone gets that one. But usually you get MLK and President's Day. That's a bummer. I- I know. No, I don't get President's Day, um, which what, what is what it is. I think I'd rather get MLK than President's Day anyway. Um, yeah, that's fair. Because just, you know. And as For all my the sister, aforementioned reasons. Yes. And as my sister reminded me, that episode of The Office where Pam is giving the confessional and she's like, I try to save all of my vacation time for – you know, as long as I can. This year, I made it three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, how's it going, guys, since we last talked to you? It, good, good. Speaking of vacation time, I was just thinking, like, that's so true. Like, I did just put in for, like, things that I know are coming up. So, like, I put in my request for the Raleigh weekend, for Yay! example. And it felt kind of like, I mean, I'm not leaving right away. It's in May, but it's weird. Like, come back from vacation, ask more, for more time off. Yep. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's been improved. It's on the books. We're good to go. Yeah, I think that's just efficient. I like to do that, too. When I know I have a bunch of vacation days coming up, I just kind of, like, put – I do them all at once. Mm-hmm. Well, so my boss knows what I'm thinking. Right. Yep. So we we um, changed like HR systems and all of that when we were moving offices and we don't have a way to formally request vacation. So my boss has just been like since October. All right, move it, write it on the calendar and I'll just eventually figure out how to oh my like, God. put it in. So like on one hand, that's kind of awesome because now if everybody's <laughs> writing it on the calendar, you know if somebody else isn't going to be there that day. But on the other hand... There's no like system that's keeping track of like your P- what PTO you've used and what you have left. And oh my it's not God, like it's on our we're, system. Yeah, we're not at the beginning of the year right now. And I've oh somewhat, my God. yeah, I've lost whatever it was. I couldn't even tell you what I had. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't think anybody else knows either. So I think it's a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, having use or lose is like my professional goal. Someday. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. I don't understand how people have more than 240 hours to carry over. I just don't understand, but I want that for myself. Sometime. Getting Someday. to the point where you will lose is my professional goal because I have never once ever been told, hey, you need to, you need to use this by September 30th because. No, I, know, I mean, I always. like used up. Almost all of my leave, like, to go to France this year. I was, like, counting the hours. So I don't get how anyone has extra slash so much extra that you would actually lose it. I know. When you. Jay worked for Google, he had unlimited PTO. Oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. I so know. he could carry over as much as just, like, until infinity. Well, just the pot never empties. Yeah, yeah, well, because oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was unlimited sick days. It was unlimited sick days and like the oh, three weeks of PTO. Too, yeah. 
But, like, that was great because a lot of the PTO that I would have to take would be when Zach was sick or when he was a baby or Alex Mm -hmm. or something. And uh, it was great because Jake could stay home with – once he had that, he was able to stay home with Mm -hmm. them when they were sick. And he wouldn't lose PTO like I would lose PTO. So – you know, that was, yeah, that was for, for sick leave, I, I have unlimited sick leave um, that can carry over. And I remember a woman who retired a few years ago, she had been working uh, where I worked for so long. She had so much accrued sick leave um, that it added on like a year or two to her retirement. It wow. was insanity. Yeah. So then do they like buy out your, your, it like counts. Account? It counts for how many years you've worked. So like instead of like maybe she retired after working there for 38 years, but it was counted as like 40 years. 40 years. Wow. I know. That's the dream (laughs) there. Forget like we're, we're peanuts. Like that's like really reaching. Like that's the Yeah, but think about all the time she didn't take off while she was like younger to enjoy like those things. That's true. Yeah. The whole like, you know. Enjoy it now or enjoy it later. Kind exactly. of it's a sick leave, so maybe she just wasn't sick very often. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's true. You know, that's true. She only had one kid, so it's not like she was, you know, because there's no maternity leave, so she would have taken sick leave for maternity leave, but it wasn't yeah. like she was taking that. So, mm. yeah, who knows? But cool. I think that this is how we know that we are definitely in our mid 30s. Is our, we're kicking off this podcast and talking about <laughs> sick leave. <laughs> We have we have definitely (laughs) come a long way. Our very first podcast, we were talking about peeing our pants and and uh, the HPV vaccine, and now (laughs) oh, and whether or not you want to have too big or too small. True. Yeah. Yeah. No topic. Um, Yeah, we don't technically have maternity leave right now anymore. Yeah, because there's only five of us now. We're not part of a bigger company like this. Yeah, that's fucked up. Wow. I mean to be fair, like we don't have we don't have maternity leave either. Yeah. You can your job can be But you work for the government, so you should have maternity leave. No, you but like you should I mean we should all have Yes, we should parental leave, but but we don't parental leave, you're right. Parental leave. And it's funny that people like pretend that we do, but we don't. Like you your job can your spot can be safe for you at work for up to twelve weeks. But you know With what? No paid leave, and you can use your sick leave or your or your wow. annual leave, whatever you want, to be paid during that time. Yeah. But that is that is not maternity. No, that's leave. Not, no, that's no not. it's not. That's no, it is that not. That's the system. Yeah, and that's the best we can do. I heard Ivanka was working on that though. <laughs> oh, great! We're saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, She's I so mean, smart and capable. And really cares about women. And really cares about women. Really She's cares. such a go-getter. We would, Yay. I mean, we would all be fine if, you know, there was, like, a situation where somebody needed to use AMA, right? AMA? Is it AM, what is it? The paternity leave. It's part of family leave benefits. Pa- FMLA. Family FMLA. Family leave. F- F- FMLA. 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 Like we, I think we would be, we would be paid leave. for it, but we would be, you know, unofficially fine with it of course um but yeah uh shandy i see you've joined me in lacroidum i sure have it is 1 p.m here and i have to drive to san francisco in a few hours so um i have grape sparkling cider oh wow that almost looks like the real stuff i know (laughs) it's just a little bit fuzzy see the fizziness on the top Uh that's the red grape part 247 at Walmart. Let's see. I haven't tried it yet. I'm sure it's going to be awful. It's better than the fake wine. Oh, there you go. Mm. So what is the difference between fake wine and grape juice? (laughs) This is the sparkling. I think fake wine is just Mm. grape juice. It's flat. It doesn't have the sparkles. And I think the sparkles does add something to it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. A little little bit of bubble. Yeah, as of recording this, there's supposed to be 11 days left of dry January. <laughs> now, Jay has told me that he's not going to drink at rent anymore, so now I feel like I can't drink at rent. Oh, He's like, I never said that, and I was you. like, we discussed this. <laughs> so now I'm like, well, I don't want to hear the comments like, oh, you couldn't wait one more day, because I know he's going to make a comment like that. I know, <laughs> I know he's going to be like half just 
giving me shit for it, but I don't want to deal with that giving me shit because it'll make me feel bad regardless. So, hey, it's 420 according to Drake. So oh. cool. Cool. Um, but anyway, um, whatever. We'll figure it out. I'll still touch base next week on January 28th when we're recording our show with the Real Weird Sisters. Yeah. Um, so please, everybody, get their feedback in for that because uh, we would love to, you know, have one of the fun shows that we always do with them, which I know we will, but it's always more fun when we get a lot of listener feedback in. So the broadcasters three at gmail dot com or three three one two seven six two three seven three. Um yeah, just all the feedback because that's always great. And if we have enough, we could do, you know, two parter again like last year. Um, which would be awesome because then we would get another week off my birthday week. So <laughs> <laughs> So give me the birthday present, everybody, and give us lots of feedback. Did you guys want to talk about Little Women? Because I know you both saw it. And <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, but did you want to talk about it at all? I mean, I would love to talk about it, but I don't want to ruin it for you. Yeah, kind of the same. Okay. We can maybe do a mini, like, spoiler-free, and then a larger discussion once you yeah, see it. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, I know it takes place in, in two timelines. Like, I know... Um, I don't know. On Love It or Leave It, they talked about they made Joe or Amy or one of them a lesbian at the end or something. Or was that just a joke? That could just be. That might have been a joke. Okay. Hmm. (laughs) Um, I don't mind though. If you guys wanted to, if you guys thought that it was worth having a good discussion, I would not mind being spoiled. I do wonder also though if um, any of the listeners have seen it and would want to write in about it and add to the discussion it's true okay i don't know i will say um that i saw it and i feel like it was okay yeah and i'm intrigued as to what you thought was just okay about it yeah because you're the first person i've heard that said it was just okay yeah so i don't know if we want to do this now or later okay well if everybody wants to write in and if alice and martha have seen it um (laughs) You guys can chat about it next week. Otherwise, I guess in two weeks we can talk about it. But okay, send your feedback in about Little Women, anybody that has seen it. Um, or, you know, in the discussion thread under this episode on Facebook or whatever. Um, cool. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Um, does anybody else, does anybody have anything else? Um, has anybody done anything interesting over the last week? No, I've been sick for forever. I feel like I'm never going to feel well ever again. Has anyone else ever felt sick for longer than a week? I sure haven't. It's terrible. That's kind of how, I mean, I don't know if we have the same thing, but when I was sick over the break, uh, it was the longest that I had been like consistently feeling really shitty. Uh, And yeah, it was terrible. It was a reminder of like, oh yeah, being suck, being suck really sick. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and it's like my therapist was saying, if it's the same thing that she had, she was sick for three weeks. Oh, God. Three weeks. I'm like, I can't, I can't, no. I can't be sick for three weeks. No. Nope. It's been, nope. a, it's been over a week and I just feel like I can't keep going like this. I'm losing my will. Oh, Don't lose your will. You, you will get better. I was sick for the whole first year of Zachary's life. So yeah. oh, man. you got this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, um, I've learned Daniel's a very good caregiver and I'm a very bad patient. Oh, be a good patient. I'm not a good patient. That is like, I'm going to go grocery shopping. He's like, no, that's not resting. I'm like, I'm going to put some stuff away. He's like, no, that's not resting. Yeah, just get the rest. I know the rest sucks though. Oh, I love an excuse for a good rest. That's, (laughs) you don't have to pull my leg there. Well, I didn't, I understand how Amanda feels because I didn't rest when I first got the hernia surgery. And then you remember I was literally (sighs) dying the next, the second half of the week, like to the point that I thought I was going to pass out and puke that one day so yeah i yeah. get it uh drake just um jinxed himself by saying there's the longest i have been healthy without health insurance and no issues oh no drake why'd you say that listening to this so so yeah anyways um oh i hid my first few geocaches <laughs> oh fun okay I did. um because now that we're downtown I don't have, like, a easy place to, like, go walking for uh-huh. exercise. So I've just been kind of roaming the city. And, I don't know, I've put a few. i put five, I think. 
So, yeah. I don't know. So how does that work? Do you go and like buy? Like are there special yeah, I ordered like, a, geocache I ordered containers a, that you buy? Or can you just like no, you can use buy a coffee can and just use that? Yeah, you can. I've actually, there's a series in North Carolina that somebody bought a different like brand of coffee can and named the cash after each can and then like, you know, hid them in the woods. <laughs> so oh, actually you can. Oh. So you, it's however creative or not creative as you want to be. Exactly. So I um I bought a variety pack of the containers. No, uh, Drake asked if I hid the container he gave me. No, because I was waiting for um you or for the group to do that. But if you are okay with me hiding that, um, I don't mind. I've got some spots that will uh, hide that are for regular size containers. But um, so I bought a variety pack, and then I actually we clean. I cleaned out all the kids' toys finally and whatnot. Uh, and I found these little finger puppets, and they fit those little like you know those bison tubes, those like long like mm-hmm. uh, cylinders, and they actually hold those in them like perfectly. So I've got some of those to take Zach with me because he really wants to come with me and then there was a, a mac truck pez dispenser that used to be zach's and i put a little log in the pez dispenser um, cool nice. but those those i'm waiting for zach i have a little i put, set aside a little lunch box and put all those fun ones in so zach can come with me because nice. i know oh, and good. you know i've just been doing it on my lunch break but yeah I, um my favorite one is really dorky and so far I don't think anybody's gotten it. It's, you know, those lamppost hides where you lift up the lamppost skirt and there's like some geocache in there. And they're like, I did a hide a pen. I put a log in the hide a pen and then just put it under there and named it. And it's outside of Linwood Grill. So I named it uh, a log, a log in a pen, walk into a lamppost. Get it? Like walk into a bar. Ha ha ha. And. <laughs> The if you read the description, the description says the log is in the pen, but the first two people that found it didn't read the description, so they were like, "There's no log," and I'm like, "Dumbasses! Why did you?" <laughs> it's read the, the description in its, its entirety. It's not even sentence. that long. Yep. There's only one not sentence. Even, it's, it's pretty like it's clear. It's clear. <laughs> yeah, there's there's only one sentence. Just read it. It says uh, the log is in the pen. <laughs> Dummy. It's clever, but it's not that clever. I know. Like, you so I, get this. <laughs> it kind of burst my bubble a little bit. I was like, well, I thought I was clever, and then hmm. the other ones, like one in a parking deck, uh, one in a tree downtown. I mean, whatever. The other ones were all easy and. You know, not or, or fake rock in a rock pile. Um, oh, cool! Ooh, yeah. Where do you buy fake rocks? Amazon. You can get anything on Amazon. No, oh, that's true. That was a stupid question. You yeah. can't get anything at Amazon. Yeah, I tried to not go through Amazon as much as I could. I tried to go through Etsy, but just to support local. Um, but the two that I got from Etsy were kind of shitty. The containers, oh, and of course, well, they were the more expensive ones because I, well, you know, was trying to shop local and um one of them i hit directly across the street from my office so i can watch from my window nice anyway i'm a cool. loser the end okay. that's cool so anyway yeah that was my new year's resolution was to hide 20 for 2020 oh that's good that's nice and I'm a fourth of the way there okay i need, anyway. I need to maybe uh work on finding 20 <laughs> i'm gone for a really long time well, I just joined because I was like, I don't want to drive far to get to like a park or something to walk. So I right around the corner from my office, I don't even have to cross the street, is this studio called Hot Works. And it's hot yoga, hot Pilates, hot TRX, like everything is 30 minute, you know, some sort of like heat workout. Mm. Um, so I did the trial and it was really, really cheap. Um, to do the so three months of this was <laughs> I think only ten dollars more than one month of pure bar. Wow. So, I did the, so I ended up signing up for the three month pack and I was like, well at least while it's cold outside I can go do yeah. this. Right, right. And you know, I can cancel it if I don't want to do it anymore. And, you know, I've tried something new and if I like it then, you know, I'll see how it goes and that's it. So Cool. Awesome. Good, though. Yeah, I bought a lot of Gatorade though, because when I did the trial class, 
I came out and I had sweated like everything out. And I was like, I need Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you do? Did you do hot Pilates? I did hot, hot Pilates. And at first I was a little nervous because it was very remedial, yeah. like very remedial. But it turns out when it's 130 degrees inside, it doesn't matter how remedial the exercise is. By 15 minutes in, you're mm, going to feel yeah. like you want to die. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. My mom was like, the next day, she's like, how did you feel? How do you feel today? And I was like, fine. It's not like, you know, it was a hard Pilates workout. It was just hard to breathe Pilates workout. So, just kidding. No, I don't know. I'll try it out. I'll let you guys know. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. All right. Um, does anybody else have anything? Otherwise, I guess I'll... I'm trying to remember what I even did this last week. And it wasn't much. Yeah. I've just, I've had the place all to myself. So I've been kind of enjoying that. And I'm like, I feel totally better now, but I was still at the beginning of the week, I was still like blowing my nose. And so I, you know, took that excuse to take it easy, yeah. uh, which I, which I did pretty hardcore. It was, it was nice. 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 Um, yeah. Nothing interesting. I've been watching Brooklyn nine, nine. Oh, oh yeah. Good? I hear it's a fun show. Um, it has made me realize that all workplace comedies are exactly the same. It's, yeah. it's, I can't stop watching it, but it is, it is exactly the office. It is exactly, you know, parks and rec. It's superstore. It's all, of you know, it's sort of like all of those. Yeah. Same yes. ones. And like with a lot of the same actors from okay. all of those. Yeah. Different there's, things. there's a real formula to that kind of <laughs> yeah. situational comedy. Yep. Yeah. 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 I was like, I knew exactly when, you know, love interests would peak and happen. Anyway, but no, it, it has been fun. Um, it's been a, a nice light thing to watch, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 Kind of the same. Yeah. My parents were in town yesterday. It was my mom's birthday. Oh, yes. oh happy birthday, Mama G. Yeah. Yeah. So we took them to the Brooklyn uh, Botanical Gardens. Uh, oh. So it was nice to get out because... <laughs> It's really the only outside I've seen for the past two days, uh, three days, because I've just been Didn't you have trying snow? to rest. I uh, watched snow? all of uh, season two of Sex Education this weekend. Oh, how was it? I haven't it even great. started. It was great. This is actually like, again, because I'm not good at resting and like binge watching for me. Is it like if I watch like two shows at once? I'm like, ooh, okay, I'm binging. I watched oh, the yeah. entire thing this weekend. Like that's that's really um, nice. atypical for me, but um, I don't feel completely bad about it because it was yeah. it was really good. And I think the sort of benefit of watching something like that yeah. is that you don't forget the details. That like sometimes totally. it takes me so long to get through a series that like I've kind of forgotten what's happened in yeah. season, like the first episode. Yeah. By the time I'm at the last episode, and like absolutely, there there is some real value of like watching everything in such rapid uh, mm -hmm. rapid succession. Yeah. Yeah. Especially a show like that where it's not it's not that long. No, um, it's not that long. I feel see this is where Brooklyn Brooklyn Nine Nine has gotten in my way because otherwise I would have remembered to watch that. But there's yeah. like six seasons and they're twenty minute episodes, so I'm like halfway through and what can what can you do? Well, yeah, don't I just don't have to finish it at this point. Don't forget yeah. Sabrina comes out this week. I know. Oh, oh great, good. Because I was just thinking, I was like, crap, what am I gonna watch now? Like that was supposed to take me like a month to get through. And <laughs> I did it in forty eight hours. Now what? Yeah, we've got but, good uh, news. <laughs> but yes, but it was very good. If you liked season one of Sex Education, season two is uh, just as just as entertaining and um, cool. yeah. We've been watching Star Wars Rebels on Disney Plus. Um, I know oh. neither of you are Star Wars people. I don't even is, know what that is. So it's a cartoon that takes place um, directly before the timeline of Rogue One. And Rogue mm. One takes place directly before A New Hope starts. Um, right. I want to go back and watch Clone Wars because I have not watched that one. But it is so good. We've had a really, I've, I don't know, I've really enjoyed it as a Star Wars geek there. I'm sure anybody listening to this that is into Star Wars has probably already seen it. But um, we're new to the party. And um, yeah, I recommend if you have Disney Plus and haven't watched it yet. You, it definitely gets better as it goes on. So <laughs> anyway... Yeah. I've still only seen the first Star Wars movie that came out, so I am a little bit behind. That's all Perhaps. right. Yeah. Maybe one day. Exactly. Maybe one day. <laughs> anyway, um, in honor of Shandy having to go to the airport, I totally did not find this one minute before we recorded. 
uh, on a BuzzFeed article. <laughs> are your airplane habits normal or are they super weird? Oh, my God. Oh. All right. What seat is the best seat? Aisle, middle, or window? Aisle. Uh, I'll open I this. Like- I'll. I'll open this twice. I'll take it twice. One for each of you. Unless you want me to send you the link. Why don't I just send you the link? Okay. Okay. That works probably for the best. Uh, Drake said sex education was good. It was very good. Oh, Shayla, you have to talk about your bored panda thing. Oh, yeah. So we were looking for things to talk about for the show. I came across this little uh, gem. Apparently, some wonderful souls have been putting stuffed koalas around New York City to try and generate uh, awareness to get people to donate to to the Australian wildfires. As researchers at the University of Sydney estimate that 1 billion animals have died across the burned out country already. However, this number doesn't include insects or vertebrates lost. uh, uh, So the loss could be even bigger. And um, so there's all these cute, uh, the images are credited to koalas of NYC, which I assume is an Instagram account. It is. Uh, So if you want to follow, and I guess they're just throughout the city, the initiative is called koalas of NYC and uh, it's really stinking cute. And if you haven't donated to such organizations, uh, what are you waiting for? Yeah. The planet is burning. The planet is burning and we can help by throwing a couple dollars at it. Cause God knows it's just up to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Does everybody have the quiz open? Yes. Oh, wow. They also have a quiz. Are your, uh, how weird are your shower habits? Hmm. Oh, dear. We can do that next if there's time. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Oh, I found another one. Ready, guys? Yep. Yes. Ready. All right. All right. So what's, uh, what do you guys like the best? I say window. So that's what I'm going with. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like window best, too. Man. I, I mean, it is problematic in some ways in that you can't get out to pee. But exactly. it's also nice to have a place to lean your head uh, that isn't reliant on another human being. Cheers you know? to that. <laughs> I uh, am claustrophobic, so I can handle I can handle it, but like it's not my first preference. I do like to see out the window, but especially for longer flights. I guess sometimes it depends on how long the flight is. Because it can be really nice to see the take off, take off and landing, but yeah, like easy access to the bathroom cannot be undervalued. It's true, that, in my opinion. That's that is true, especially when traveling with children. Yeah, but they tend to like sitting next to the window, so you might as well just whatever. All right, so apparently <laughs> this quiz tells you if you're, I don't know what. It gives you the results of what everybody else is saying at the same time. So mm-hmm. cool. All right. Uh, how early do you get to the airport? Are we talk- I, I think that this is probably assuming domestic because obviously yeah. that makes a huge difference. That's I know. true. I was going to say based on maybe it's just based on your travel habits. So if you if you don't. because you can't get like one of the answer one of the possible answers is less than an hour before the flight. You you literally can't do that for an We're, international I know. flight. Yeah. Just answer it whatever fits your circumstances the best. So if you travel international more than you travel domestic, then you probably do one to two hours or over two hours. So the choices are less than an hour, one to two, or over two hours. I try to get there an hour before, but let's be honest, I do less than an hour because I That's live true. very close to the airport and uh, am lazy. Yep. <laughs> You've definitely dropped me off for a flight 30 minutes before my flight took off and I still made it. I knew you would. I, almost, I was like, I lost be probably a year off my life, but she, uh, she was freaking out, and I was like, "You're gonna be fine. It's exactly. you. Nobody's like, traveling. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine." I'm like, "Okay, okay, okay. It doesn't feel fine." Yeah, yeah. I said one to two hours before the flight for me. For obviously, it needs to be more for international. So you, but yeah, okay, I less an than, hour to two just as a rule. Yeah, yeah. Four percent get there less less than <laughs> <laughs> living on the edge. <laughs> on the edge and then 68 percent one to two hours uh which is e- easier to travel with just a carry-on or just a check bag just a carry-on yeah just a carry-on with kids just a check bag for me 
Oh, yeah, that's fair. I have this like weird anxiety of like when I check the bag, I'm never going to see it again. Mm. See, my, well, yeah, one time my bags went to Japan. Yeah, when, when I was going to France, and um, we were going that's for kind Christmas. of the wrong direction. Oh no! Yeah, we were going for Christmas. Our bags came back from Japan a week later, which was oh. after Christmas, and of course, all of the Christmas presents were in our luggage. So. Like we still got to give our presents, but when it's you know after Christmas, it's significantly after Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> it was the sum of the magic. It's a bummer. It was yeah. a bummer. Yeah, yeah. See, Sorry. I've never lost a suitcase. It's just this irrational fear that I'm going to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I also just like it's so nice to not have to wait at baggage claim. You just yeah. get off the plane and go. And go. But don't forget, mm-hmm. most of my travels are to and from Islip on Long Island and on Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. So on Southwest, you know, your bags fly free. So I don't have the check bag fee, even though Southwest is way too expensive. Anyway, I always check a bag because I've said this before. Anytime I fly Southwest, I always make sure I check a bag if possible because I'm paying for that included in the price of the ticket. Yeah. Uh, That's so... Yeah. So I do that. And then with Frontier, when we fly Frontier now in the summertime, they do not let you like it. You have to pay for everything is all a la carte. So um, we've been if, if it's for a quick flight, I will cram as much as I can into the diaper bag. Oh, that's mm. smart. And if smart. it's something I'm only there for one day, it doesn't matter. And I don't mind wearing the same pair of jeans two days in a row. Right. And do you keep do you keep stuff at your parents' house just to like particularly for the boys to make it easier for you they, less stuff uh, to bring? Zach has jammies there. Um Alex doesn't. Zach has some stuff there um that does make it easier. And I keep like workout clothes there and, mm. and my pajamas too. But other than that, um, you know, clothes clothes I still have yeah. to pack. And I have my I have contact stuff there and um toothbrushes and all that. But Makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. What's the best airplane snack? Peanuts, pretzels, or cookies? Cookies for me. Well, I would say, I mean, are these like real cookies? The uh, Biscoffs. They've, I'm going with the Biscoff cookies that Delta and all do. Mm, Those okay, because if they're the actual things given by the airline, then I'm just going to go peanuts. Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends. Are the peanuts the honey roasted? Because if they're honey roasted, then peanuts all the way. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't. Mm. But if they're not, if they're just like boring nuts. I like, like me some boring nuts. nuts. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's something understated about boring nuts, Amanda, I guess. <sighs> but if it's real, like, cookies, cookies, like, the cookies that my friend Sally makes, the nut cookies all day, every day. But if it's the cookies that, like, that the airline gives them, no. So I, think we I just want to make it clear that I prefer yeah. cookies as a food. Yes, but, but I think we have to assume that yes. airline cookies. Airline what cookies about nothing. What about JetBlue? They give some good snacks. I've never flown JetBlue. Oh, okay, oh. Either. oh my goodness! Yeah, I you know. get you can get like tear the blue Terra chips. You can get Ooh, that like, is good. little Oreos. You can get Ooh. like I mean, they really do it up. Yeah. See, um, if we were talking Oreos, then it would be cookies all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going Southwest across the country gives you the Ritz and other. I don't know. I, I like the Biscoff cookies though. I'm never going to turn those down. Um. I would say it also depends, though, on what time of day it is, hmm. which which is then going to determine what I'm drinking with them. Because if it's if I'm getting a coffee, then the cookies will go better to Duncan. But if I'm getting a beer, then peanuts all the way. Mm. Mm. All this back and forth. I might end up just going with the pretzels. <laughs> Because I have to think about, like, realistically, if I was given those three choices on an airplane, I probably would just go for the pretzels. Hmm. Because, yeah, I think the Biscoffs are a little like, Mur. If they're just no, boring peanuts, I'm a little like, Mur. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recline in your seat? No, I don't. Oh, so the choices really? are no, it's already cramped enough and it's rude to the person behind me. Yes, I bought the extra two inches of recline space. And sometimes, but only if I'm trying to sleep. I guess sometimes, if I'm, only if I'm trying to sleep. I do all the time, except for when we're eating. Mm. Yeah, sometimes. Sorry, person behind me, but the person in front of me is doing that, too. Yeah. Drake and, agrees with me yeah. about the cookies. Those little biscottis. <laughs> I always uh, think I like them. And then I have them. And I was a little like, <laughs> and then I'm always a little like, oh, these aren't quite what I wanted. No, anytime they're like, do you want an extra pack for your kids? I'm like, yes, give me an extra pack for my kids. And then I have them with coffee the next morning at work. 
For my kids. For my kids. Ooh, but ginger cookies on United. I'd be down for a ginger cookie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> reclining in your seats. Um, I 42% say sometimes only if you're if I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I moved on. <laughs> I don't know if we all did, but I did. I, yes. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, which cabin do you usually fly in? First business or economy? Economy. Economy. So it was eighty eight. Flew first class people. once and it was glorious. Oh, we I know. Upgraded. Ooh, I we got upgraded to transatlantic time. upgrade. Ooh. It was oh. that was actually the time that our luggage got um, sent to Japan, and I think that's probably why because we the volunteered <laughs> to oh, stay an extra yeah. day because the plane was overbooked, and then they upgraded us to first class, which was amazing from LA to Paris, and they gave us eight hundred dollars each. In the form of a check, not in a voucher. Yeah. Uh, So everything was amazing, but our luggage went to Japan. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Yeah, we got upgraded once and it was just New York to Raleigh. But they let you start drinking before you even take off when you're on the ground. We yeah. started drinking in the VIP lounge at the airport. <laughs> so we had a couple of hours of champagne there. And then we oh boarded the plane and had champagne in the plane. And then we had like a meal with like actual cutlery and like little salt and peppers, individual like shakers and like all of this amazing food. I think it was also on Air France. So it was just like the food was oh, so ridiculous. Good. Oh, Air France yeah. food is And then good. you recline fully and completely all the way down to laying down to go to bed. It was just amazing. I mean, Frank had like cognac after. I mean, it was just, oh it was God. really nice. Oh, you except amazing. for the Japan. Yeah. Except for wow. the Japan luggage. It was great. But do you think it made up for it? Like, did, I think did it, it was still okay. okay. Yeah. It was still okay because we were like, okay, we have 1600 extra dollars and we just flew first class. Like, that's okay. right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have some money to like go buy clothes for the week. Yeah. <laughs> It was okay. And actually on my way back, um, there was a problem with my flight and I actually had to miss my original flight and they put me on a different flight and they upgraded me to business class, which I guess they gave us like, they gave us a sparkling something or another that was not very good um, while we were on, while we were grounded. Um, It was a nice gesture, whatever. I'm not going to say no to, you know, free free sparkling, whatever, whatever. And I apparently had a little bit more space. I think I did have a little bit more space. Um, so it was okay. But it's too expensive to buy, like, business class and first class. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Jinx. All right. <laughs> do you use the onboard bathroom? Yes. Yeah. Out of necessity. Uh, yeah. Like, what else are you going to do? <laughs> um, hold it. Uh, oh according God. to this, 32% of the people hold it. I was one of those people for a very long time. Like when I used to not fly so regularly, it like took me years of flying to get comfortable with the idea. Really? Yeah. No. Is this like a general bathroom issue or was it specific to planes? Like, do you not like public? Okay. I also, I don't like public bathrooms, but I particularly don't like bathrooms in motion. (laughs) So planes, trains, buses, all of the above do not like it. If I can avoid it, I will. All right, then. <laughs> cool. Uh, what's the best way to kill time on a plane? Reading, sleeping, watching movies? Watching yeah. movies. Mm. I could do all three. Ideally I never sleeping. Watch... Yeah, but I never. can't always. Like, I sleep a lot on planes, but it's not always at the right moment. Like, I I have slept through multiple takeoffs. Um, <laughs> I can fall asleep hard, like, really fast. Mm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to continue sleeping through through the whole thing. That would be the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Shit sleeper. Can't sleep on a plane. Mm. I can sleep on a plane, but I think the only time I really get to read is on a plane. But the unfortunate thing about that is for the last six years, I've only been on a plane with children for the most oh. part. Mm. And yeah. So. Yeah. Sometimes I sometimes I, I um, read. I like the idea of reading, but like I can't be too tired. Because then my brain can't read, and a lot yeah. of times when I'm traveling, I am just by nature you're like sleeping. tired because you went to bed. All late that or champagne, whatever. right? You're tired when you're traveling because your schedule's off. Yeah. Oh, and I was gonna say all that champagne didn't keep you awake. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't have been drinking to, in order to read. That that doesn't mm. work. And then also like reading and being in motion are not super great for me. I mean, it's not like it's not gonna make me sick. And in a car, it's much worse. But I have to be like really interested in the thing that i'm reading 
Yeah. I would say, like, honestly, what I usually do is listen to podcasts. Mm, I've listened to podcasts. Yeah, um, I always like to think I'm going to listen to podcasts. Though, like, you know, get like a, a big like chunk of a bunch and like mm-hmm. binge through them, but it never actually ends up happening. You oh. know, before Alex was like when was born, I used to be able to listen to podcasts when Zach was of that age where he had his own seat. But since Alex has been born, he loves to pull headphones out of my ears and go headphones mm. and try to wear them. And yeah. Um, all right. We're almost done. This quiz is totally different than I thought, <laughs> but that's what I get for selecting it a minute before we recorded. That was uh, good. This is I like it. I like it. Me too. Which uh, seat do these arms rests belong to? The arm rests in the middle. Are they? Oh, I know, right? This they is both, a real, I this say they is both belong to the middle. They both belong in a way. To the I mean, because, the, you can share. Like when I'm in that situation, like I will share with the person in the middle. Like make sure that our elbows are, you know, not. But I will sort of give priority and most of it to the person in the middle because, like, I have my own entirely, and they just get screwed on both. Yeah, that's fair. I think I've never really thought about it, but that that makes a very you make a very good argument. Thanks. Given that <laughs> I generally now sit in the middle because it's a child on the aisle in the window, uh, Jay in mm. the aisle, and me in the middle, I claim them both for myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. I mean, if yeah. it's, it's just your kids, right? right. Then it's yeah, you know, <laughs> they have small arms anyway. Yeah. yeah, sorry, my all of my stories are like yeah, and I travel with kids, which is totally boring. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> It's also just fact. You travel with your kids. Mm-hmm. That is very true. Although I'm really interested to see how Alex is going to do in his own seat because he I, he is too little. Like the ch- he is barely oh, in size oh. 18 month clothing, and he's going to be two in three <laughs> weeks. He's little. I don't know if that seatbelt is going to even cover him. So I feel like you, you should pass a height re- requirement or something. Yeah. Seriously. Um. In order to have your own, to have to buy your seat because it's not fair for the parents of short kids because I'm still going to have to hold him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm curious to see how he's going to do because um, I think we're just going to end up holding him anyway. Uh, so it looks like the majority of America or a mayor of the majority of BuzzFeed readers agree that they both <laughs> belong to the middle, but it's close. It's only 43% to 31%. And 23% say whoever gets there first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Drake said, I generally get the armrest to myself regardless because of my size. I don't have a choice. Well, well it's, a, it's an advantage, I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also did Trans-Pacific First Class Best Decision Ever. Nice. Some yeah, guys. So. Uh, finally, do you keep the window open? Right, so, it depends on the time of day. Depends on the time of day, but usually no. I usually I usually like to keep it open no matter generally no matter what time of day unless I'm like trying to use my laptop and it, it has a glare but Zachary for some reason does not like to have the window open he likes to look out at takeoff and landing but he likes to have it closed and I don't know why if he's like nervous about the height he doesn't seem scared of heights like in any mm. other time he doesn't indicate that that's why he wants it closed interesting it Makes is sense. interesting. People, yeah. little people especially. 75% keep the window open. I said closed because like usually travel in oftentimes my travel involves like nighttime. Which yeah. makes or sense. Or early, early morning. When you're over the ocean. If I was flying over the ocean for the majority of my flight, I would probably keep it closed as well. Well, and then tell you yeah. do also. That's right. For uh, mm-hmm. saving energy, right? People, well, and people need to get used to like it's night. Yeah. Like we're right. going to pretend it's night now so that you're not so yeah. like jacked up. In the, when, well, in the summer, they'll tell you, please close the blinds when you're leaving your seat to save energy because we to keep it cool inside because we turn the right, light right. off in between. <gasps> so, but, all right, cool. That was, that was great. I'll put this in the show notes. <laughs> I love the first comment on this quiz is I know. <laughs> I've never been on an airplane. <laughs> Then why are you taking this? All right. Cool. That wasn't, that wasn't a question. Cool. <laughs> Dumb comment. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a quick commercial break and then we will get into some uh, feedback. 
All right, we are back. Um, Drake has had his own. Kayla had to go to work, so Drake has had his own private broadcast. If you would like your own private broadcast, <laughs> <laughs> you can up your level to the Hangout Level patron at patreon.com slash jayandjack. <laughs> Uh, that said, I think it is time to move into the feedback portion of the show. Uh, we start off with some uh, the feedback from Facebook, a.k.a. the Facebook. Uh, this first bit of feedback is, oh, and also thank you all for going on that long airplane journey with us. <laughs> this journey. Uh, that was fun. I liked it. It was more fun than an airplane ride. Yeah, that is that's true. That's true. Uh, this is from Mandy, and she says, "I need a suggestion for a good app that tracks what books I've read. I was at Books a Million today and found a book, but I can't remember if I've read it already." Uh, oh, dude, I that, need that too. Isn't that just what Goodreads is for? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I was really good about Goodreads, like uh, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, but I've really fallen off it. Hmm. Well, I think – well, we know Matt has the broadcast book club up there on Goodreads. And I'm pretty sure Joanne also has a Goodreads oh, yeah. list. Mm. Um, and I don't know if Carol still listens, but I'm pretty sure that uh, one of our maybe current or former listeners, Carol, had a list up there because I think she was like one of the only like people I was friends with on Goodreads. Um, yeah. And I <laughs> never kept it updated because I'm just the worst. <laughs> I guess you have to read books to keep it updated. <laughs> I don't do Goodreads, but um, one of the advantages of using your local library is that you can look up your your checkout history. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That is a good idea. Good point. All right. True story. Um, Matt says, totally agree that Gerwig should have been nominated for Best Director. Little Woman could have easily been a by-the-numbers award bait movie, but she brings a lot of life to it. I'm sure she must have loved that book growing up. Other women who should have been nominated, um, Asis Lupita Nyong'o. Nuango, I think it's Nyong'o. Uh, Asis Lupita Nyong'o. Hustlers writer uh, slash director Lorraine Scafaria. And Jennifer Lopez, How Does J-Lo Not Get Nominated? You know, I saw her on like the top of everybody's list of people who should have been nominated that weren't. I haven't seen Hustlers. Has anyone seen it? I haven't. I haven't seen it, but I know that I've seen the list of people that are shocked that she didn't get nominated. Yeah, it got a crap ton of buzz. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I think it's tough for those movies that come out like sort of before award season starts. It, it's easy to kind of yeah. get lost and forgotten yeah. about by the time we get to like this time in the year, which is a real bummer. Yeah, it kind of is, right? Yeah. Um, out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so, yeah, I guess it's time to get in some, to, into some That's What She Said. All right. If we waited till 2021, it'd be kind of a letdown. <laughs> it was a really long time to not have gone there. Oh, I still managed to enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a destination to put on your list. You wanted this for 13 years. Uh, they... <laughs> Sorry. They found it in the organ when they were cleaning the organ. <laughs> we didn't see it in a guidebook. <laughs> it makes sense. Things fit better. I have more space in there. I measured. It fits. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an experiment. I don't know if I'll do it again. Get a tissue and get them. <laughs> Sorry. Then I see the sack. Oh, God. <laughs> I still have nightmares about that from last week. <laughs> <laughs> it came up first. She's only opening it. You have until she swallows. <laughs> I knew when I said that, I specifically worded what I said like that for this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. What were you talking about? Uh, the, the NyQuil. Ah, yes. nice. It's like a magic wand. Kind of looks like a pan flute. <laughs> okay, everybody, I need you to all take a journey back with me. Close your eyes and okay. picture Natasha Leone saying this. Natasha Leone saying this in like American Pie or something. <laughs> it's kind of like a pan flute. <laughs> like a pan flute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or even even in uh, what the hell's the show? Russian Dolls. Russian Doll. I could even see her saying it in Russian Doll. Just Natasha <laughs> Leone saying it in the wild. <laughs> I like the cyclical repetition. <laughs> I have a hard out at four. Mm. <laughs> Damn, I'd still do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, then we'll finish up this show with an email. Uh, we only have one email today, and that is from Greg. Yes, Greg writes into us asking some dating advice. Mm. He says, hello, Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. I hope this email finds you well. I was wondering if you could give me some insight and or opinions on something. While I sort of started looking for a date online a while back, I ended up not really pursuing anything and stopped using my various dating profiles for a bit. I'm still not really using those, but one of my coworkers has caught my eye recently. I know, I know. Dating a coworker is a bad idea. But given that it's really the only place I see people consistently, I may need to go for it despite the known potential issues involved. But the part I'm looking for some perspective on is whether I should even attempt it based on my current state of mind. Part of me feels like I'm too damaged, for lack of a better word, to date anyone right now. Like, should I attempt to engage with someone while I know I'm fairly depressed and emotionally vulnerable and a bit needy? I just feel like I bring a lot of baggage and feel like it's not fair to attempt to bring someone into that. But I also kind of feel like I'll always be able to say stuff like that about myself. So that would mean I shouldn't ever ask someone out. And that doesn't feel quite right to me either. How would you feel if you were single and a guy asked you out and you found out about some deep wounds fairly quickly? It's hard to not have them come up as first dates tend to involve questions about family. And mine is just a minefield of awkward conversation. Whether it's parents, dead dad, or siblings, younger brother passed away, older sister wants nothing to do with me. It gets weird and dark quickly. I've sort of gotten used to it being my life, but I can't imagine any potential date would find it endearing on a first date. I guess no matter how I feel, that will always be part of my life story that I will share at some point. But what do you think? Should I wait until I'm feeling better? How can I find a way to be less of a bummer on a date when family comes up as a topic? Should I just be alone forever? I just don't know anymore. What should I do? Thanks, broads. Greg. I think first things first, I think we can all agree that no, you, the answer is you shouldn't be alone for forever if you don't want to be. I right. think that that's uh, the first, uh, first thing to say. I agree uh, with that. I think, I mean, so I get what you're saying. And like, I do think that it's great to work on yourself um, if you're feeling depressed and and I get what you mean about like not being in a in a place potentially to be in a relationship but um like you said some of these things are not going to change and I know that for me for example this isn't about like dating or anything but just like in my everyday life like I also have a dead parent and my dad died by suicide so it's like kind of a minefield potentially and what was a really big like turning point for me was to realize that like when people ask questions about like it comes up like sometimes I avoid it and you know I talk about my mom and whatever um but sometimes it comes up and like people tend to want to know how people died it's like just a thing um I learned that I can say I don't want to talk about it and that's like such a simple thing um but it was very empowering so I mean I think Like, yeah, your family situation isn't going to change, but you don't, it's okay if you don't like go into detail, I think on a first date about your family situation, you can just say that your family life is complicated and you, you know, like don't really feel like talking about it in depth right now. I think that's totally fine. Yeah. Now, when, what advice would you have for Greg if he followed up with, well, it's going to come up at some point, what would you say? That it comes up when you're re- you now have agency over when to bring it up. Yeah, totally. I mean, and I think if you're dating someone, then if you do start to date that person, then you'll be developing a relationship, and at some point, 
you will share those things when you feel like more comfortable with the person that doesn't have to be something that you share with somebody that you don't know that well. So I think it's fine to wait. Like, yeah, it should probably come up at some point in time, but I don't think that you have to worry about, you know, um, going into detail about all that kind of stuff on a first date. I agree. It's like, if you're, if you're not comfortable and I think that's part of getting to know someone is building trust with them. And I think there's nothing wrong with being upfront about that aspect of just say, simply saying, I don't feel comfortable about talking about that just yet. I think yeah. it's a perfectly acceptable answer. And like, if that's someone you want to continue dating, they should be comfortable with that. Totally. And I think another thing to remember is that although nobody has your specific um, life experience or family, like, everyone has some sort of baggage and everyone mm-hmm. has some sort of family shit or friendship or, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Like we all have our things. So the person that you're going to end up dating, like they have their deep, dark secrets too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, I'm kind of of two minds that like, yes, it is very hard to go out and date when you're not feeling very, um, not in the, in your best place when you're just feeling kind of emotionally really dark and heavy. But I think there's also something to be said about wait, like waiting to feel better. Um, Cause I, th- I think sometimes changing, changing your perspective and starting to feel better is by taking steps and doing, doing something about your situation. So, so I'm, I'm kind of on two minds about that. You know, dating dating and someone at work is is a um, complicated uh, situation, um, and I I think it does because it is someone that you do see all the time. I think you do have to kind of weigh how much you interact with this person in the workplace um, and what would potentially happen if things didn't work out. Like if this is someone that doesn't, that you don't interact with a ton at work, they're not in the same department, you know, that, that is something, um, something to consider and really think about. But I would add that like, I don't necessarily think that it's like a definitely a definite no, no. And I've said before, no, I don't think it's, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a no. I, yeah. Daniel and I met at work. So obviously I don't think dating at work is a no, no, but I (laughs) think there is, there are, there are things to to con- to consider, um, and you have to make sure that like you you've thought about them before you, you go too far down the path. And my guess would be that Greg already has, but um, if not, definitely it's something to think about. I know, like I have said before, that I try to keep my work life and my and my personal life very separate. But I understand that. I mean, I think that's a function also of my job, and like so, different workplaces have different workplace environments. Um, and if it is the place that you meet the most people then like, it makes sense. Um, But yeah, of course you have to think about what could potentially happen, but, but again, it could also potentially be a wonderful thing Mm -hmm. or you could date and then you could no longer be dating and you could both be super mature and grown up about it. And it it, just go back to being coworkers. And that could also, you know, that's also a, a potential outcome. Like it doesn't have to be necessarily disastrous if, you know, if you start dating a coworker and then, don't continue to date them after a while. Yep. Yeah. I know that I don't have much to add um, to kind of repeat what you guys have to say, <laughs> but <laughs> I will add though, as far as the uh, current state of mind portion of the email, I know that Greg and I have kind of spoken on Facebook a little bit. Um, but I, after talking about how I felt so great and saw everything as the glass half full at the end of our last show, right after New Year's, just, I don't know, everything just really just went like, <laughs> for me. Um, but uh, I am, I'm starting to feel matter, better this week than I did last week. But I mean, um, hang in there. I know it sucks. And I know that you don't always have control over it. And um, I wish that I could offer you some magic 
something something um i don't know maybe try like hot pilates because i feel a lot better <laughs> since i sweated everything out um <laughs> yep so move move a muscle change a thought that's what my therapist always says <laughs> or dehydrate oh. yourself without gatorade um <laughs> but like i do know i do know how you feel and i'm i'm Sending you support, my friend, and I hope that you are starting to feel a little bit better emotionally and mentally soon. Um, but like Amanda said, it, sometimes it is so much as, you know, move a muscle, change a thought, um, and, you know, doing something to kind of get out of it can kind of change because um, – the last – maybe there's something about January, but the last time I felt down was for a week at the end of last January. And mm. I think I talked about the, this on the show. The thing that snapped me out of it and, like, changed it within an instant was when I saw that car accident it happened in front of me. <gasps> right. Remember the yeah. person went to yeah. make the – Somebody was going straight. They had the green light and we had a blinking yellow arrow and that person must just not have realized what a blinking yellow arrow means. And they like just totally made the left hand turn into that car. And there was a kid that was sitting on the other in the back seat of the other or was in the, kid in the front seat. The kid was sitting like wherever the car didn't hit. So I was like all sorts of like shaking and freaked out. But like, you know, that jolt of adrenaline just kind of had brought me out of it then. Um and now I guess I don't know. Maybe it was the hot yoga. Maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was just it. Enough time has passed. I don't know. Um, maybe it was the end of some kind of like detox period. I don't know. But um, I do know. Um, you know how you feel, and my heart goes out to you. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you see someone at work that you think is interesting, I say, I say go for it. You know, maybe if anything, maybe you have a new work friend. Yeah. Tread carefully. Yep, tread carefully, but uh, yeah, proceed with caution. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as Drake pointed out, it's not a good practice to make up what-if scenarios and then not do something out of fear of it happening when it might not even come up. Very true. That is... Yep. Yeah, legit. That is great advice. That mm -hmm. is... I a thousand percent agree with that. Mm -hmm. So hang in there, my friend, um, and we will see you in May. Yes. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much all. That's all she wrote, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> this show took us some places. Um, we came to the conclusion that um, when you fly on Air France or wherever the fuck you flew, transatlantic, you can drink a lot of champagne in the VIP room and then in first class. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do that when you're flying. <laughs> we learned I highly the armrest. Give the middle seat armrest to the person in the middle seat because their life sucks for however long yeah. you're on that plane. <laughs> because and they they get the worst of of both situations. They get the claustrophobia effect. Um, so they they have that, but they don't even have like you know a window to look out per se, they, and then they, they also have can. to get it up for sucks. yeah yeah they have to get up if you have to go to the bathroom. Yep, be kind yeah. to those people. Yeah, they Definitely. have no control. Buy them over champagne. The if they want to, if they <laughs> if they want to t close their eyes and go to sleep, if you want that window open, they're powerless against your whims. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Just give them, let them win. Give them let that them one win. win. Give them something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you have anything to share with us based on what we've talked about tonight, or any other week of uh, for that matter and oh if you have any feedback for the real weird sisters crossover episode next tuesday the 28th is when we are recording january 28th you can give us an email the broadcasters3 at gmail.com or you can give us a phone call at 331-276-2373 we again would love to hear from you we really like doing feedback if you have any advice for greg or any questions in general we love to Again, we love your feedback, especially your questions and your everything. Um, hit us up. If you would like to shop through the Amazon Affiliates link, um, you can do so by going to jandjack.com slash Amazon. That will link you to the referral page. Um, and you can just do your shopping through there. We would really appreciate that. Um, all lowercase letters, again, jandjack.com slash Amazon. 
you can, if you want to get your Team Science Team Universe mug from like so last year, you can go to <laughs> um, janejack.com slash store, I think it is. I don't know. There's a, there's the links in the show notes. Go to the show notes. Swipe up on your information or, you know, swipe next or right or whatever you do. It's all there. Um, or you can go to janejack.com and click on the Become a Patron link on the website at top right hand corner of the page. Just as we're about to finish, JP oh. has just joined us I super know. quickly. Hello, JP. I'm very sorry to hear that you sliced off your fingertip yesterday. So oh, no. yeah, not good. Not great. Cool. Um hope you're on the <laughs> mend. And um yeah. That's it, everybody. Uh, does anybody else have anything before we go? Any last minute announcements or requests for specific types of feedback? What do you do to help yourself feel better when you have a cold? I will try anything. Aww. Except rest, what? apparently. Right, I want all of your like old wives' tales. Like, What are the things you do to feel better? Because this cold will not go away. Yeah. And people are going to say rest, so be prepared. Oh. <laughs> Except for rest. I hate resting. Resting is the worst. <laughs> resting is so boring. Uh, but you can comment on that. Oh, garlic, like handle of whiskey. Yeah, that's good. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one, too. Um, but, yeah, all right. Um, you guys can comment on the Facebook page. Oh, go to our, join our, our fan Facebook page page thing and our instagram account i think we're starting to get back into instagramming on the regular yeah we're the broadcasters three on instagram the broadcast three on twitter and just search for the fan page also all these are in the show notes um uh for us on facebook because we're starting to pick up uh, on that again um especially the instagram so yeah okay well i guess that's all i got on that note, my name is Colleen. <laughs> my name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God, guys. We <laughs> just, uh, Drake just pointed out in the chat, oh, my God, we had an entire episode that was mainly based on airplane stuff and not one mile high joke. Nope, not a one. <laughs> and as JP says, if you fly over Canada... Uh, it's the Kilometer High Club. No. <laughs> the kilometer. <laughs> oh, surely you can't be in the Kilometer High Club. <laughs> <laughs> really rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> I think that Mile Highless is a good one. Yeah, I like it. It's good. It's good. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, bye guys.